Welcome to Gigapixel. In this video, we're going to walk through how to use face recovery, an AI model that helps to improve faces on lower resolution images or low quality faces. This is not an AI model that you would use on animals or on portraits necessarily, but more on smaller pictures. So to get started, we're going to use a sample image that I've already imported and I've made enhancements by upscaling, selecting an AI model, and maybe tweaking the settings. But maybe there's a little bit more that I want to fix. If I go in and see a little bit more, zoom in and in, we can see that there might be a little bit more detail that could be improved. So I can use face recovery and click on this toggle. And seeing this button, select faces to recover, I'm gonna open this and it's gonna show me all the faces that the AI model detects. It will pull from features like the eyes, the nose, the mouth, in order to give two types of faces. So high confidence and low confidence. High confidence is gonna be shown with a blue bounding box around it, and a low confidence face will have more of a faded gray box. You can click on any of the boxes to tell the AI model, I do or do not want this enhanced. If you highlight it in blue, that means you want to enhance it. And you can do the same for low confidence. In this case, I'm going to select all. And this is going to select all the high confidence faces and click apply. You can take this enhancement and then further fine tune it by using the face recovery strength slider and gradually moving it to the direction of more improved or maybe less. But with generation two that has just come out, you can change this and use it for specific use cases. We're gonna pull up a different image. So in this sample, we have here a group of people and the main subject is this woman. But for example, I want to see the details of the rest of the family. And so I can use generation two, just like generation one for a realistic mode. And it'll stay true to the image's fidelity in the case of it'll stay close to what the faces really look like. What does creative do? Well, the creative mode is great for pictures where the faces have very little detail. So I'll pull up a different example. In this scanned image or old photo, I'll come around and I'll see here that the face of this man, you can't really tell there's eyes. It's very, very obscure. So I'll use face recovery again. And instead of Gen 1, I'll use Generation 2, click on the creative model, and you'll see here that a face has been completely added in. Now, the big thing to take away is that there is a higher quality output when you use the creative mode, but staying true to what the original image looks like could vary and have distinctly different features. So if I were to click on the realistic mode, you'll see here after the enhancement, just a little bit more detail, really faint. And you can use this example of the man and here in the woman to kind of compare. I'll go back and just to over exaggerate the difference between the two modes, let's push the face recovery strength all the way to 100. Taking a look here, seeing there's some eyes coming through, maybe teeth is better improved, but then creative, the face completely changes. Again, here's the realistic. Here's creative. So just keep in mind that these modes are really helpful if you are trying to pull a little bit more detail and control what features are really shown, or maybe you wanna to stick to as close to the original. Either way, generation one or generation two will be useful for any use case, and it's worth exploring and trying out. Let us know what you think, and we thank you for watching. Thank you.